This is V Meta Frameworks in Angular. My name is Brandon Roberts. You can follow me on Twitter at Brandon T. Roberts. I tweet out GIFs, I talk about sports, and I block people sometimes. So that's just what I do. I'm also a maintainer on the NGRX project, which is a set of libraries for building reactive Angular applications. Also a Google developer expert, which just means I've been around the community for a while and been able to do some cool things there. Also a software engineer at open source where we help people find their next contribution in open source. So let's get into the agenda for this talk. We're going to talk about Vite, of course. We're going to talk about meta frameworks and talk about how Angular fits into this picture. So first I'll talk about Vite and some of its uh, features and goals that it has provided through the web ecosystem. So first we'll talk about features and then we'll talk about impact. So Vite was, was created to solve some specific problems in uh, web development or front end development. One of those problems was intended to uh, solve server, slow server starts in development and one of those ways that instead of using bundle based development, dynamically loads files using browser APIs. And this is where ES modules has become a lot more important in terms of the ecosystem around Vite and how it works underneath. But overall, it intends to improve the developer experience for building front end applications. Along with these things it intended to solve, some of the features it has is instant server start to increase the productivity of developers there. HMR support for fast feedback. Developer experience out of the box where it just helps developers be more productive right out, right out of the gate. Faster builds, of course, everybody wants to get builds faster. Extensibility with plugins to help people build more things around it. And TypeScript support. So naturally everyone in the Angular ecosystem wants these things in some way or another. So we naturally uh, saw these things and said, we want to have that too. So when there was, uh, Vite was being introduced, there was a lot of impact that it had in the web ecosystem overall. If we look at the kind of the landscape of how things are today, there's really been a mass shift to adopt uh, Vite in the web ecosystem. From Astro to React uh, to SolidJS, Nuxt, uh, Vue, Svelte, there's Quick, and even tools like Playwright and Vitest. And there are more tools here that have, like I said, shifted to using Vite just because of those, these features that it provides uh, for users. Next, let's talk about meta frameworks. Let's talk about the definition of a meta framework, some of the common features that meta frameworks offer and get a little deeper into those. So a meta framework, uh, as this definition is a system one level above that stitches multiple frameworks together. And this comes from Ben Holmes who wrote a uh, post on the Prismic blog that you can check out about meta frameworks more in depth. And Angular itself is a framework at its core where it already has some of these things built in, such as core components, pipes, uh, directives, and services. It has routing, it has HTTP client, forms module, uh, SSR, and more features that you just get out of the box. When we're looking at meta frameworks, there are already an ex a lot of meta frameworks that exist today that kind of build on top of a particular framework or ecosystem. Ones like Next.js that's built around React, uh, SvelteKit for Svelte applications, Remix is another uh, meta framework around React. There's also Astro that uh, takes a unique approach where it blends the, where you can bring your own framework and build that on top of, of uh, its framework itself. So you can think of it in that terms also. There's also Nuxt, 
and Solid Start and Quick City, just to name a few. So when we talk about meta framework features, there are some common things that uh, these meta frameworks have, uh, such as file-based routing, server-side rendering, uh, where we ha also have static site generation, and some form of API routes, whether those be embedded in the routes themselves or some other combination of that. So when we have file-based routing, if we look at how routing works in Angular today, we have a configuration of routes that you can define manually as just part of your normal development workflow. With file-based routes, you can use this route to use folder and file-based routing to where this convention is the structure of your folders and files, and you also get those routes uh, generated for you. There's also server-side rendering, where the application is rendered on the server, and then that HTML is shipped to the client. The application is then hydrated uh, on the client, uh, and there are, in the Angular ecosystem, there are uh, applications out there today, such as Angular Universal for this. There's also static site generation, and these are mainly focused on content-focused websites, such as landing pages, marketing sites, blogs, and the tool we normally use this today is a tool called Scully in the Angular ecosystem. There's also the islands architecture that has been gaining a lot more uh, popularity these days. And this is the idea of using partial hydration to build entire websites. Uh, these are also an alternative, everything loaded in a single JS bundle. And they're also these different uh, islands are loaded in isolation and rendered as they are needed on the client, rendered as they need it, rendered on the server and then hydrated as they need it on the client. So if we look at an example page, we have a header component here and a navigation um, menu on the side in our content area. And each one of these pieces has its own, uh, lives on its own independent island. So they are loaded and independently isolated from each other. But there's also API routes. And these are just APIs that you can build without external libraries whether you're familiar with just building something out of Nest, uh, Nest, Nest.js or just Express itself, these are also convention-based. And some of them are inline in the route component themselves, which meta frameworks such as Remix that use uh, actions and loaders, or frameworks like Next.js with uh, get static props. So Angular has still been evolving, uh, even with the web ecosystem along this way. So uh, like I said, we still want to go keep evolving with the web and these frameworks or meta frames that these features offer. So going back to the landscape of the web and how everything has shifted in that direction, uh, we definitely want Angular to continue to evolve and take advantage of everything that the web has to offer with tools like Vite and ESBuild and things like that. And that's where tools like projects like Analog have come in. Analog, by definition, is a meta framework for building applications and websites using Angular. And I'm just showing a nice logo there because every, every meta framework has to have a, a nice logo there. So I know what you're thinking. I mean, why, why build this now? Uh, well, Angular already has a framework on its own. It has an ecosystem around it. What do we need to build on top of that for? So this isn't the uh, first time that, you know, meta frameworks around Angular have been mentioned. I've even mentioned it myself. And I know other people around the ecosystem have thought about these things. And ideas are great, but those things uh, have to, some things have to be in place for those things to, to happen. And some of those things have changed uh, over time in helping uh, Angular be in a position to have a meta framework or build a meta framework around it. And some things have changed since then. Angular has definitely made strides in evolving how you build Angular applications. And one of those things is standalone components, which was introduced in Angular v14. 
Uh, this has opened up many possibilities of viewing Angular in other uh, ecosystems, even environments. There's also the uh, ES build, uh, ES build based browser builder that's being built with uh, into the Angular CLI that's looking at alternative ways uh, from Webpack to build applications with Angular. And although uh, ESM has had its share of, you know, pain in the web ecosystem, it definitely has helped with the V integration itself. So let's talk about like, how Angular compilation works today. The Angular compiler uh, wraps the TypeScript and to provide Angular specific metadata. This happens globally uh, using knowledge of all the files in the project. It takes those uh, files and then produces an output. Now V definitely works a little bit differently in this way. And a lot of the uh, web ecosystem has, um, we're already in a position to do this or take advantage of this way, but the V transform pipeline works a bit differently. Uh, v actually works on single file, using single file compilation. So it can process files in parallel and produce these outputs, multiple outputs faster, which in turn speeds up development in that way. So how do we go about supporting uh, Angular uh, within the Vite ecosystem? Uh, the first way is with a Vite plugin that we can use to tie these to the, the build compilation that Angular has, along with the processing that uh, Vite has to kind of work with those two things together. In the, in the future, we could look at a scenario where uh, V, the transform pipeline with V works on these multiple files and then produces these output for then. And then looking at a future for uh, Angular, Angular team is also looking at the potential of using tools like this, uh, using tools like Vite and ES Bill, which Vite uses underneath, to where the Angular could use the same single file compilation to process multiple source files and produce this output in parallel. So what are some of the features in the analog project? Well, of course it's uh, powered by Vite and to enable a lot of these things that we talked about before. We get things such as fast development, take advantage of those, take advantage of the plugin ecosystem. And like I said, tap and continue to tap into that wider web ecosystem that has evolved as feet has evolved. There's also tools like Vitest, uh, which is also powered by Vit. And if we're looking at the Angular ecosystem today, a lot of the tools use Jest, and Vitest has a Jest compatible API, and also has a smart watch mode to where you can only uh, transform those particular files that are needed. And things such as ESM and TypeScript out of the box, which Angular is built on top of TypeScript already. So it's like a natural progression there. Some other uh, features of analog today, said powered by Vite, uh, supports unit testing uh, with Vitest, and also integrations with um, other ecosystems such as Astro, where you can use your Angular components within uh, an Astro project, which I wrote a blog post about that that you can check out. Even other tools like Storybook are also moving in the direction of using Vite for their compilation and uh, development pipeline. And even tools like Playwright, uh, which is another tool for testing, is, has component testing that could that uses V could integrate with Angular there. And this is uh, there are also more interesting integrations that could come out of this uh, by supporting Angular in V and continue to evolve in that area. So in the future, we're also looking at other uh, features such as file-based routing, server-side rendering. Uh, static site generation. 
and server and API routes. So we have some, some parity there uh, with other ecosystems. And I also provide these uh, integrations that I talked about or using Angular and Astro to build uh, websites with and have those uh, uh, server rendered and only bring in Angular uh, when you need it for those who are, are comfortable with using Angular as, as part of their uh, development. So now we get into uh, contributing to Analog. Of course, there are many ways to contribute to, uh, to contribute to this ongoing effort, whether it be GitHub issues, uh, writing documentation to kind of iron out some of the things that people try out with. Uh, pull requests are always welcome, uh, especially in open source projects. And also sponsorships definitely help with the the some of the um, things that are involved with maintaining these projects. As you can see here, we already have some people who have been contributing to the project already, and we look forward to more people getting involved with the analog project. You can check out the project itself at github.com slash analog JS slash analog. And also check out the docs at analogjs.org to find out how you can get set up or even could start contributing to the project. So to recap, I talked about Vite and the things that Vite has brought to the, the web ecosystem. Talked about meta frameworks uh, and the features as they'll provide and things that uh, Vite kind of enables uh, in that way, where we can kind of integrate these meta frameworks together uh, and other ecosystems that are built on top of this already. And I talked about how Angular fits into this picture today and the analog project and how you can get involved. Thanks.